Of course, one day you saw a scene in a movie, series, or documentary of an Eskimo wearing fur and heavy clothes standing in front of a hut made entirely of snow. And one of the questions that most people have when they see this scene is how can someone live inside a house made of snow? The weather in the polar regions is cold and the snow is also cold. So we build a house out of snow so we can go inside and warm up? The subject at first seems completely illogical, but let me tell you that the subject is logical. And these houses are not cartoons. Snow houses or igloos are actually existing houses built by Eskimos and residents of polar regions until now. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so that you receive all new updates on the channel. The Arctic is one of the most extreme environments on Earth, starting from the coasts of North America to northeastern Siberia. But despite this and despite the extreme cold and harsh climatic conditions, there is a resilient people who have been able to live and endure in this place for thousands of years. And this people is the Eskimo people. The Eskimos who inhabit the Arctic are completely in harmony with the lifestyle there and do not like to leave the place they live in at all. And this is despite the lack of cities, facilities, or even any landmarks of civilization and urbanization. All that is in front of the Eskimo people is snow and a very harsh lifestyle. But first, let me tell you something marginal. The Eskimo people do not like this word. If you say this word to them, they will be very angry with you. The word Eskimo is derived from a term used for strangers who speak a different language as well as for people who eat raw meat. They prefer to be called Inuit instead of Eskimo because Inuit in their language means people. The Eskimo people live in icy regions where the temperature in winter reaches 50 degrees Celsius below zero, and anyone living in such a harsh climate must look for a safe shelter and home to live in, whether this house is built of brick, metal, or even wood. But unfortunately, the Arctic region does not have any of these things at all. Even the trees and forests in the place are almost non-existent. Therefore, the inhabitants of this place learn to build their homes using the only thing available to them, which is snow. The Eskimo people have resorted to building dome-like ice huts for thousands of years, and these houses are known as igloos. And the question here is how can an ice house be a warm home? In fact, physically snow can warm you up and also maintain your body temperature. To understand this strange dilemma, let me tell you a story about an animal called the sea otter. This otter is an animal that feeds on fish and marine creatures. For this reason, it is forced to live in cold water. But at the same time, there is no thick skin or thick fatty tissue on its body to protect it from the cold. So he uses something very strange, which is air molecules. The otter's fur is dense and its texture is very soft and the secret to heating it lies in the composition of the fur fabric from the inside. The otter's fur is precisely tapered to the point that it can trap air molecules inside IT.8 .AT the same time air is an excellent thermal insulator. Therefore, the heat inside the otter's body does not easily escape. This is because the trapped air on its fur from the inside prevents this heat from escaping from its body. And because of this issue, he is exposed to low temperatures and does not feel cold. This is because the trapped air on its fur from the inside prevents this heat from escaping from its body. And because of this issue, he is exposed to low temperatures and does not feel cold. Well, I don't understand what you want to say. And what does this otter have to do with it? Simply, what we want to say is that air is a good insulator for heat. And if we find a type of snow that contains a suitable percentage of air, this would be suitable for the construction process. And here we come to the Eskimo field. Snow is their game and they have a lot of experience with its type and characteristics. For example, if I asked you, do you know how many types of snow? You will say to me, what is this nonsense you are saying? There are no types of snow. I will say to you, snow has many types. The Eskimo have in their language a huge number of different words and terms that express snow. They can describe it with dozens of different words that have been eloquently formulated to describe its type and current state, simply because it is the most thing around them and the most thing they understand. There is a type of snow they call hard dusty snow, and this snow is about 10% frozen water and 90% air, and it takes the form of layers on the surface of the earth in icy regions. This type of snow is very suitable for the construction process, first because it is solid and can withstand storms and winds, and secondly because it contains a large percentage of air, and since air is an excellent insulator as we said before, this type of snow is suitable for insulating buildings from the inside. Therefore, the Eskimo hut or igloo maintains a warm temperature inside it and does not allow it to leak outside the buildings through the walls of the buildings. And this is what is required in the heating process, that the heat emitted by our bodies or the heat around us in the house does not leak outside. 
It is worth mentioning that the bottom of the igloo is not a flat surface, but the space from the inside is carved and consists of several levels. The entrance to the house is very low, then there is a second level slightly higher for lighting a fire or performing tasks such as cooking and others. Finally, the last level, which is the upper place where they sleep. In fact, this graduated system did not come out of nowhere, but it is intended and also has an important role. Hot air naturally rises to the top because it is light, and cold air naturally falls and settles at the bottom. Therefore, any heat present in the place, whether it is generated by the fire that is lit inside or even the heat radiated from the occupants, all without exception rise to the top and hover around the people in the upper area. At the same time, the walls of the hut are heat insulating, so all these things combined make the atmosphere warm inside the hut where the temperature inside reaches 10 degrees or even 15 degrees Celsius. And if you feel that the temperature is still very cold, let me tell you that outside it is 50 degrees Celsius below zero. An experienced Eskimo individual can build a small hut on his own in just about three hours. While large huts that can accommodate many people like a whole family, building these houses may take two days or more. Despite the great progress in architecture and construction, no one has been able to discover a way to build an igloo better than the way used by Eskimo individuals. The spiral method and dome-shaped exterior structure is a very stable construction with no wasted space. And anyone with experience in engineering will know that this shape distributes all vertical loads and forces that fall on it and converts them into horizontal forces that are discharged into the ground in order for the building to be stable and resistant to storms and winds.